Hi, welcome to your channel, Generous, Gracious and Gallant. I'm your host, Dr. Ghosh, and I'm back today with another inspirational story for all of you. Before we go on to the story, for those of you who are already my subscribers on Facebook, WhatsApp and YouTube, heartfelt thank you. For those of you who are coming on to the first time to the channel, Generous, Gracious and Gallant, let me give you a brief heads up. We started the channel in 2015 on Facebook and today we have about 820 members there. It's a private group and joining is by invitation only. We have an additional 120 members on WhatsApp and we started the channel on YouTube in May 2020 in, viewing, in view of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. And there today, we have about 270 members. The mission of Generous, Gracious and Gallant is very clear. We want to share daily inspiration with you and also share with all of you the stories of mankind at its very best so that we can change the thought process and strengthen the moral fiber of the present and coming generations. This will enable you to put your best foot forward always. So could I request you to please subscribe to the channel Generous, Gracious and Gallant by pressing the bell icon so that you get an update every time we release a new inspirational video for all of you. Coming back to our story, the gentleman I'm going to be speaking to you about today is the Polish Cavalry Army Officer, Intelligence Agent, Resistance Leader, who volunteered to go into the Nazi death camp, Auschwitz, and organize the resistance inside there and also share information with the allied troops to update them on the conditions of the camp. This inspirational human being I am speaking to you about is Whitehold Pileski. He was born in Russia on 13th May 1901. Now, when World War II broke out, right, he joined a cavalry platoon uh, commander by General Joseph of the Polish Army and he took part in the heavy fighting against the German troops. This was on 26th August 1939 onwards. His platoon was almost completely destroyed by the German troops. So they withdrew on 10th September 1939 and were incorporated into the 4th Infantry Division under Major Jan and he was the second in command. Together they destroyed over seven German tanks, one aircraft was shot down and they destroyed two aircrafts on the ground. 17 September, the Russians invaded Poland and Whitehold and his men, including Major Jen, continued to fight as underground partisan fighters or the resistance as they were called as. We have frequently heard about the French resistance. However, let me share with you, the Polish resistance was very, very active and they passed on top class intelligence to the Allied troops. The resistance continued throughout the war and a major source of information for the Allied on German and Russian movements were the Polish intelligence 
which was always found to be path breaking and grade one intelligence. As part of the Polish intelligence, along with Major Jan, his commanding officer, on 9th November 1939, they founded the secret Polish army or the underground resistance. It was among the first underground organizations in Poland. To maintain his cover, Whitehold worked as worked as a cosmetic cosmetic store as the manager to fool the Nazis and Russians that he he was a common citizen. All the while, he continued to pass on first class intelligence to the Allied forces. It also needs to be noted here that Major Jan, his commanding officer and others were in increasingly becoming anti-Semitic, means anti the Jews and the civilian population also started supporting the Nazis on their anti-Jewish approach. However, Whitehold was anti this and he clearly pointed out multiple times that the Jewish resistance has been supporting substantially towards inter intelligence gathering and he was in favor of the Jews being in included as part of the resistance and also he was against the extermination of the Jews. It is said that because of his difference of opinion and support to the Jews that he was chosen for this extremely dangerous mi mission of going inside the Auschwitz death camp. He had a chance to refuse. However, he volunteered and said yes, he will take up the challenge because he knew he was being marginalized outside due to the vast majority of resistance fighters who were taking the Nazi line of prosecution of the Jewish personnel. He arranged for himself to be arrested during a guest post sweep and go to the Auschwitz death camp. When he reached the Auschwitz test camp, information was not available to the Allies on the conditions inside the death camp. It was thought to be any other normal prison for POWs. He went inside with the idea of organizing the resistance inside the death camp and ensuring that the right information was av available to the Allied troops. Once he was arrested by the guest po, right, and sent to Auschwitz, he found the conditions there extremely brutal. When they got off the train, all of them were be beaten by the Nazis with clubs and 10 men were randomly selected and shot. The Nazis also singled out doctors and educated Jewish personnel for special treatment of thrashings and execution by the bullet. Witold also was beaten harshly by the Nazis. The group which had come in by train to Auschwitz test camp, including Witold, was relieved of all their valuables and stripped totally, shaved, assigned a number which was marked on their body and given prison striped clothes to wear. 
God told them, You will not leave from here alive. Rations we provide you are only sufficient to keep you alive for six weeks. The mass gassing which was there in Auschwitz had not yet started. But the crematorium was up and running. Another guard told them that the way out of this death camp was through the chimney of the crematorium. It was 2.5 years of real misery for white old. They had to undergo bed bugs, lice, typhus, work details were exhausting and guards punished them often and beat them badly. Frequently, just for scraps of food, prisoners betrayed each other. This was the conditions under which white old went in. Post going in, in the two years Whitehall was there, he organized the underground to distribute food and clothing, take care of the sick, pass on information, much needed critical information to the elite team and also hide the sick from the Nazi prison guards so as to prevent them from being executed. Executed. He was so effective that among the thousand members who he had rec recruited to the Nazi and uh, to uh, to his resistance underground against the Nazis, in more than two years, not a single man gave away any information to the Nazi, even over inducement of torture or better food. The underground he organized at the camp was so powerful and educative that they were able to pass on class 1 information to the allied troops, save many other prisoners, sick prisoners from getting executed, organized a method to steal food and rations from the German stores and distributed to the POWs who needed it and also distributed clothes to the POWs in the camp. One method of getting news out to the Allied troops was some of the POWs, especially the Jews, were buying out their freedom and they were made to memorize critical data and when they went out they passed on this information to the resistance and allied troops. One of the first met, um, messages which Whitehall sent out is bomb Auschwitz the death camp even if it killed lot of POWs including himself he said because the conditions were horrifying the Nazis were conducting medical experiments psychological ex experiments and torturing women and children raping the women and they had also started the gas chambers and were gassing thousands of Jews on a daily basis. When this message went to the British High Command, the British High Command could not take action because number one, it could not be seen as one bombing their own fellow troops. Number two, they had only less than 200 planes left. Britain had only 200 planes left and the range was not so high that they could bomb Auschwitz. Later when the US joined the war also, though the capabilities had changed and much more equipment and planes were available, they still chose to ignore Whitehall's messages to destroy the camp because of this reason that they could not be seen bombing their own personnel. 
it is estimated that because of this ignoring of Whitehall's message to bomb the camp, an estimated 1.1 million people were gassed in Auschwitz, a majority of them Russians and Jews. And Russian Jews came in for very special treatment. Extra thrashing, extra starvation, gassing, medical experiments, psychotic experiments done by the Nazis. Seeing that the elite were not paying heed to his messages, Whitehall, along with two other fellow resistance fighters, escaped from the camp in a daring way and continued to work with the local resistance. After the war, Poland became a communist state and Whitehall was arrested in 1947 by the communist regime and tortured multiple times as he was loyal to the regime in exile in Britain, the Polish regime, government in exile in Britain. However, he did not crack under torture and continued to say that he did not know anyone of the resistance. He underwent extreme torture and Later, he was executed by, by the Polish government. Till today, no one knows where his grave is. When he was sentenced to death, he said, I have been trying to live my life so that in the hope of my death, I feel joy rather than fear. I repeat, he said, I have been trying to live my life so that in the hour of my death, I feel joy rather than fear. A very extremely brave man. After the fall of communism in 1990, Whitehall was recognized for his wartime access activities of fighting against the Germ Germans and Russians as a Polish cavalry officer, being a resistance leader after the defeat of the Polish army, then as an intelligence officer going into Auschwitz death camp and sharing first class intelligence with the Ali, allied troops and resistance fighters. He also published a report which is the first comprehensive intelligence report of the atrocities during the Holocaust by the Nazis at Auschwitz death camp. This report gives complete details of the medical experiments, the psychotic brainwashing, the starving, the gassing, the cremation and the way Jews were beaten and exterminated by the Nazis. Whitehall, an extremely brave cavalry officer, resistance leader and the only man in World War II who volunteered to go into the Auschwitz death camp, Nazi death camp, so that he could supply information and also organize the resistance. He proved to be worthy of the task allotted to him and he organized the resistance of a thousand plus men inside the death camp, ensuring that quite a few Jewish lives were saved from execution and food and clothes were made available to the prisoners by stealing from the Nazi stores. A brave man who remained unacknowledged during his lifetime and was put to death, but only after 1990 his deeds were published to the public and he was acknowledged as a brave soldier. 
friends i am also a firm proponent of the concept of difference to one that means we have to in view of the ongoing covid-19 virus stand up and be counted make a difference to someone in our community not all of us can be white told and make a difference to thousands of people's lives but all of us can stand up be counted and make a difference to one person in our community mankind requires your support we are facing a huge battle against the covid 19 virus lakhs have lost their jobs livelihoods and lakhs have lost their lives this is the time where those of you and us who are lucky enough to have good means of livelihood as well as not affected by the covid 19 virus to stand up and make a difference to someone in our community make a difference to one person that's it you don't know where the ripples of your kindness will go but before you do that it's important that you remain safe that itself is a major contribution to mankind's battle against the covid 19 virus you remain safe by wearing a mask whenever you go out always always maintaining social distance of 6 feet and ensuring you avoid crowded places as much as possible once you are safe only then can you go out and help others first keep yourself safe if you are not safe you cannot help anybody else so it's important in this battle against the infamous covid-19 virus that you be safe first follow the government norms and then go ahead and make a difference to someone who requires your help in your community friends i request you once again to please subscribe to my channel generous gracious and gallant and till we meet again stay safe and good luck thank you for listening to this inspirational story on your channel generous gracious and gallant